Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for watching and all that stuff. Really appreciate it. And I've got hopefully a fun video for you today. Um, have you ever had a photo that you took and you really like the photo except that whenever you go to process it, you can just never get it right? Um, you know, I don't want to call it a white whale. You know, it's not something that's haunting me forever because it's not that big a deal. I mean, this is art, so it's kind of fun. Um, but I've got a photo. Let me just show it to you. Here it is. Uh, it's a photo I took in Venice. I bracketed a series of three photos. Um, this is the middle exposure. And, you know, I like this scene. We had just done a little canal tour or whatever, and the sunset was gorgeous, but I was shooting it from the boat, um, which is kind of hard to do, right? Um, regardless, we finished. I got off, uh, and, you know, I was standing there, and I was like, God, this is beautiful. I love that scene. But the color was kind of gone. I mean, there's some things I could do in Luminar to try to bump the colors up, and I do that plenty. Um, but what I really wanted to do is just replace the sky. So as you probably know from my previous videos, uh, there are some ways to replace skies in Luminar. And generally speaking, if you got a really clean, flat horizon, it's pretty easy to drop a gradient mask and just replace the sky. Or if you have like a perfectly blue sky, you can do what I call the silhouette method, and I'll put a link up there. And that was a very popular method but again, um, each of those uh, require specific things, right? Either a flat horizon or a uh, specific kind of sky. But when you have a sky like this, which is not um, you know, perfectly blue, um, and uh, I have a horizon like that that is not perfectly flat, what do you do? Well, um, generally speaking, people go to Photoshop or other places to do more complex masking jobs, but I'm not really a Photoshop guy. I am a Topaz guy. I like Topaz a lot. So I've had Topaz remask for a long time, and um, it's incredible, to be honest. I'm not really sure why I've, I've never, I haven't used it a whole lot, and I've certainly never made any videos about it, but I'm changing that right now, because, man, it is amazing. So, I took this photo, um, and I said, you know what I wanna do? I wanna put a new sky on it, and then I took it into Luminar to do my typical color edits and all that. So, I took that photo, and I turned it into that photo. Now, that's a lot of color, and I put this on my community tab, so, if you look across my YouTube channel, it says like, you know, videos or playlists or whatever. There's one called Community. I posted this there a week or so ago. Lots of color. It might be kind of like clown vomity to you, but I got to admit, man, I brought the photo to life. So I want to walk through a quick workflow of how I did the masking in Remask and added that with the color enhancement in Luminar to come up with this, what I consider a beautiful photo. So let me hop into Remask. Uh, here we are. So... Um, what you do uh, is basically you load your photo in Remask, and this, to be clear, this is not a tutorial about Remask. I actually think I will come back. In fact, I know I will. I'm going to come back and do more videos about Remask. Um, they're on version 5. I don't know when they're going to have a new version, but the great thing about Topaz is if you buy one of their products, you get it for life. So even if they come out with a new version next week, you're going to be able to uh, get a free upgrade. I'll put a link down below if you want to purchase uh, Topaz Remask. And to be clear, that's an affiliate link, so I make a small commission if you do that. You can also use my name, uh, Jim Nix, as a coupon code to save 15%. It sells for about 70 US dollars, and it's worth it, believe me. So here's what happens uh, in Remask. You'll notice the entire screen is green. Keep in mind, green is like go, right? Uh, and red is like stop, right? You know, go is stop, like in uh, a car. Um, in this case, Green means keep. This, the green stuff is what I want to keep in the photo, and red is what I want to get rid of. There's also blue. So what you do is you start, you click on the blue here, and you can see it uh, gives you this little um, circular uh, mouse, if you will, right? So all you do is you make sure you're highlighting that blue, and all you do is you drag that across the horizon line, okay? So I'm going to do that real quick and, you know, probably kind of sloppily, uh, and that's okay. Um, because this is a very intelligent product. And anyway, so I went like that. Now, all I did is draw this blue purple line. And what I'm doing is I'm telling Topaz Remask, hey, that's way too complicated. You figure it out. Like, I don't even know. So the blue stuff is, hey, Topaz, you figure it out. The green is keep and the red is get rid of. Hey, Jim, where's the red? Let me show you. So these are brushes here. And again, I'm not getting deep in this uh, video about the brushes. Down here is fill, right? So I can click on the red fill, right, which I've just highlighted. And I drop one click into the sky. And I've just told Topaz, get rid of the sky. Don't want the sky. Adios, right? 
I'm, I'm also telling it I want to keep the stuff in green and the stuff in the blue or purple that I highlighted, that's basically the line you're drawing that separates your green from your red. And you're telling it anything in the blue or per, I don't know what color that is, it's kind of blue and purple to me. But you're telling Topaz anything in there, you figure it out, which of course is the complicated horizon line because you see all these little things sticking up and all that. Anyway, when you're ready, you click Compute Mask and look at that, I mean, it's basically done. now. Um, there's a little bit of overlap here, and in future videos, I will walk through a tutorial about how to clean that up. But part of what you can do is, once you've computed mask, you can come down here and you can say edge hardness. Maybe I want to increase that. Maybe I want to increase the strength of the mask. And you can see that's cleaning up some of it. And in, it's even got a really pretty nice job, considering this is a first pass, um, along some of these tiny little things, this little canopy and all that. Um, once you have that, all you do is you go add a new sky. So you come down here to image, and I'm going to go click on that, and I've got so many things on my desktop. I'm going to go to textures, I'm going to go to clouds and skies, and I'm going to choose this sky, and I'm going to just drop it in on top of that, and my new sky is in the photo. Now, I'm on the sky layer, so it's laying on top. I'm expanding it to get it a little bit wider, and then I'm going to drag this sky up like that just to get those clouds a little higher. You can see a little bit of the mountain for my photo is showing up, so I need to pull that back down. And I think something like that looks great. So then all you do is you hit Save As, and let me show you the image that I saved from Topaz. Okay, so here's the image that I saved, and I just did all this as a JPEG. I would normally work with a RAW file. Um, but you can see how clean this mask is, even along some of these uh, edges here, right? You can look at that, and I mean, it is just perfectly clean. It's insanely clean. It's amazing. I'm so happy. Um, so that's my base photo, new sky, previous uh, foreground. Now the trick is, how do I make the colors match? Because whenever you replace the sky, I, I really think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you if, essentially have to, unless you just happen to have perfect lighting in the foreground and perfectly matching the sky that you um, added. I didn't, simply because the sky I added is a colorful sunset and the foreground, you could see, was kind of a post-sunset, blue hour was kind of coming, the color had died, and it's, you know, it was a little bit brighter exposure, so it was a little bit washed out. So I'm gonna hop into Luminar now and kind of uh, see if I can jack this up and make it look good. And I can, because I know how to use Luminar. So let's walk through that. So. Um, a couple layers here. First thing I did is add a little bit of clarity just to give it a little bit of depth. A little polarizing filter. You can see that darken a little bit of the sky. Color temp was uh, next. A little bit of uh, bluer and a little bit of uh, tint bump. And again, what I do here um, is really just a, uh, a dance, as I've talked about before. I'm just adding filters and checking things out and trying to see if it works well. I went through a number of presets. This was actually a preset of mine uh, that I used, and then I made adjustments to it. Just all I'm trying to do is get the colors in the foreground to kind of look like they go with the colors in the sky, right? Next, I added a little saturation and vibrance, and by the way, everything I'm doing here is a global edit. I'm not doing any masking yet. That's what the next two layers are for, because I do need to do some masking to sort of even it out. But right now, I'm just trying to get the colors aligned. So next was split color warmth. Nice little bump there. Color balance. If you can see, I think the photo, especially the foreground, is starting to look pretty good uh, compared to the background uh, or the sky. A little image radiance, a little Orton effect, just because I like that kind of dreamy thing. Tone, uh, there we go. And top and bottom lighting. So there we go. Um, not perfect, but I'm not done. But I think we've come a long way. So here's the original right? New sky, existing foreground, not really looking like they go together. And here we are. Now they got both a little bit more blue. A color, The color in the buildings is coming up. Let me show you, right? A lot more muted, desaturated look in the foreground. Now we're getting a little bit more color. I've got a lot more blue in the photo. So I like where I am, but I'm not done. I need to do some customization. And so at this point, um, I'm making edits just to the foreground. I go in and um, I added saturation and vibrance here. Um, you know what, I should turn all these filters off so I can go through them, how about that? Um, added saturation and vibrance, so there's before and there's after. Uh, oh, I didn't have the layer on, hello. I was wondering why that wasn't making an impact. Um, you can see I got really blue and what I did is, let me just show you my brush. 
um, I just brushed it in like that. So added saturation vibrance, brushed it in. And what I really could have done, because all these filters are just being applied to the foreground, I could have added all these filters, keeping my eyes just on the foreground, and then brushed it in at a layer level so that I could cover every filter at once. I didn't do that. I actually just copied and pasted the mask from one filter to the next. Uh, next was Golden Hour. You can see we're getting some nice color, and I think, especially like this kind of peach, kind of orange, and that one over here are starting to kind of go with uh, the colors in the sky. And, and that's, again, all I'm trying to do is, is get it to look like they go together and not look like, hey, I took a photo in Venice and I stuck a sky from five miles away from my home in Austin, which is what I did, onto the photo, I'm trying to make it look like um, it, they go together, right? So next up was color balance. That made a huge difference. Let me show you that. There's the before, there's the after. Absolutely adore color balance. I did some adjustments in shadows. Uh, Mid-tones, highlight, I didn't touch it. So it was all shadows. Um, if you're not familiar with color balance, check out that video. Uh, I love it. Absolutely fabulous tool. Don't have the time to go into it here. Um, and then HSL. And uh, let's see here. Did I do any hue work or luminance work? Nope, just some saturation. So all I did, took the blue down. Um, so if you look at the before, that foreground, that blue, especially really in the bottom of the photo, is so freaking blue. It's really too blue. doesn't go with the, uh, the rest of it, so I, I lessened that. Okay, so now at that point, I'm like, man, I got a pretty good looking photo. I'm, again, I'm kind of biased. Um, but it's a little too saturated, so all I did is I added another layer. And I could have done this on the previous layer, but I like to separate it. Um, and I just took the, sat uh, yeah, the saturation and the vibrance down a little bit, simply because it was pretty over the top. Um, there's the before, really saturated, and the after, a little bit less saturated. And that was a global adjustment across the entire photo. And that was really it, my friends. So I was able to go from that, uh, the composite, right? Uh, new sky on uh, my Venice photo to that where um, I was able to keep the nice color pop in the sky and then add the color pop in the foreground to get them to kind of match. Now you could do anything you want and keep going. I stopped here simply because I was completely happy. I got a beautiful mask thanks to Topaz Remask. Uh, I got some beautiful color work thanks to Luminar and I think I have a beautiful end result. And that's how I did a composite using Topaz Remask and Luminar and that's why I think it's a match made in heaven. Incredibly powerful masking tool in Remask. Incredibly powerful color edit and filter work in Illuminar. Gives me something that, frankly, I'm really proud of. Like, I'd hang that on a wall. Um, I'd put that for sale in my portfolio. Although, I, my personal opinion is, if you're adding new things in that weren't there, that you should disclose those. Just my personal opinion. So, like, posting this, I would say, new sky added in post or whatever. But... Regardless, the point is I was able to go from a kind of crappy looking photo, uh, just remember the other sky was uh, worse, um, and now I've got that. I'm really happy with it. I hope it helps. I'll be back soon with more videos, especially about Topaz Remask. Absolutely adore that thing. Um, and I'll walk through in detail a little bit more about how it works. They got some great videos on YouTube if you want to check them out, and uh, you can get either Luminar or Topaz at the links below. And feel free to use my name, Jimnix, as a coupon code for either. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Hope you had a good time and hope it inspired you to go try some things on your own. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon and adios.